currently Kirkland. Your source for city news and events in the community. With Erica Sanford at the news desk, stay up to date with weekly news reports on what's happening in Kirkland. Now, here's Erica. Welcome to Currently Kirkland, where every week you can engage with your community by discovering the latest developments in citywide events. I'm Erica Sanford. The deciduous forest surrounding Crestwoods Park is dying. Logging removed the western red cedars and the Douglas firs, as well as the alders and the maples. And blackberry, native to Armenia, but invasive to Kirkland, moved in, sprawling across the forest floor and preventing coniferous seeds from taking root. The hardwoods, now almost a century old, are at the end of their lifespans. More than 100 volunteers gathered there last Saturday to give the forest new life. They planted more than 200 coniferous saplings and eliminated more than 80,000 square feet of blackberry. One of those volunteers was Pearl Jam guitarist Stone Gossard. Um, there was a lot of things. One is the existing program, the Green Kirkland Partnership, was already doing forest restoration in parks, and then Pearl Jam uh, graciously donated some money to offset their world tour and uh, we were able to use that funding for this park specifically. A little while ago there was a Pearl Jam concert and uh, they're paying for this to uh, make up for oh, cool. like the car oh, exhaust and stuff. The hand in the dirt work has been going on at Crestwoods since November when contracted crews began eliminating blackberry and other invasive species. But the idea to revitalize the dying forest formed shortly after Pearl Jam's 2009 world tour. As we tour, we put a lot of carbon in the atmosphere. Our strategy is to uh, try to offset some of that carbon by um, doing some restoration work. Pearl Jam emitted 7,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. And Gossard, the band's guitarist, believed offsetting those emissions was the band's responsibility. Instead of not touring at all, we decided to keep touring but try to do something to uh, mitigate the carbon. And in March 2010, Gossard announced the partnership and his $210,000 donation to the Green Cities program. The partnership would rehabilitate 35 acres of open space in four cities, Kent, Seattle, Redmond, and of course, Kirkland. You know, there's no big evergreen trees growing in these tracks, and there should be, and there's a lot of invasive species. So uh, in 50 years, you'll see some, uh, some big cedars and some big uh, dug firs. Um, and those, you know, those, those trees will store, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 tons of carbon. It's a, it's a pretty cool project. Gossard was looking for cities with energetic volunteer cultures. People come here and play soccer, and, but we have these natural areas that are really important to preserve. And without the volunteers coming around and giving us the effort, we wouldn't be able to do this just um, on, based on staffing. So uh, it's a huge kudos to the residents of Kirkland and for the other people who come from outside of Kirkland and help make this possible. I believe in it. I believe in volunteering. I form, you know, I'm part of different groups that have to do with sustainability and the environment, and this is a great family thing. I like my kids doing this. I like it very much. The next volunteer planting will be on Arbor Day in November. From this natural work in progress, we'll turn to infrastructure work in progress. Kirkland work crews are now focused on improving travel in two parts of the city. The first is at the intersection of 108th Avenue Northeast and Northeast 68th Street, where progress towards safer, more efficient intersection continues. This week, contractors are working on the new turning lane that will alleviate traffic congestion on Northeast 68th Street between I-405 and 108th Avenue Northeast. By spring, they will reconfigure the intersection to make it more accommodating for buses and large vehicles. And by the time it is complete, it'll add one more benefit, an improved walk route to Lakeview Elementary School. Up in the Rose Hill neighborhood, crews are about to begin an essential stage of the Northeast 85th Street overhaul, undergrounding the utility cables that are currently hoisted by utility poles. Of course, before workers begin cutting into the pavement, they'll first be identifying access points and surveying the road. The city will be undergrounding utility cables along Northeast 85th Street from Northeast 120th Street to Northeast 128th Street. It will be preparing 85th from 128th Avenue to 132nd Avenue 
for future undergrounding. This is one part of a series of improvements the city will be making to Northeast 85th Street. Last fall, crews built a new turning lane from 114th Avenue Northeast onto eastbound Northeast 85th Street. They also upgraded that intersection's traffic signal. This last story is about the efficiency of conservation. Last February, Brad Raddick, the Albertsons store director in Kirkland's Juanita neighborhood, returned from an Albertsons convention in Minneapolis with a new mission. That mission, to transform, recycle, reuse, or donate more than 90% of the plastic, expired food, and rubbish he and his fellow workers threw in the garbage. Albertson's workers placed recycling containers throughout the store. You can't walk into the store now without seeing some kind of recycling sign, Raddick says. They began recycling cardboard more religiously, along with styrofoam, tin, and aluminum. They donated food that hadn't yet expired and composted food that had. By the end of the year, the staff had swapped their eight-yard garbage dumpster, which they filled twice a week, for a two-yard garbage dumpster they filled just one time per week. This reduced their monthly garbage bill from $1,300 per month to $500 per month. And since last February, they've donated 190,000 meals worth of food to the Food Lifeline. I suggest that people just do what they're doing already at home because everything you recycle at home you can do at your business as well. It diverts so many uh, hundreds and thousands of pounds of waste and food that, that used to go just to the scrapyard and into our landfills. And now we're actually uh, feeding people. We're also saving money on garbage costs and we are, you know, recycling is just the way to go. Remember, you can access any episode of Currently Kirkland on demand on the city's website on your mobile devices, and on YouTube. We'd also love to hear from you. If you have any news tips, suggestions, or comments, please send them to kirklandtv at kirklandwa.gov. Thanks for watching Currently Kirkland. We'll see you next week.